Welcome to Mod 3 Style. Today we are going to learn to sew. I've been teaching sewing in my home studio for the past 10 years. I've taught roughly 300 different students. Today I'm going to share with you what I've taught each one of them on their first day of sewing lessons. The first thing we need to learn is how a sewing machine works. Let's head over to the machines. In my home studio, I have six different machines. I selected these two today because I believe they're representative of what most people sew on at home. This is a Brother machine and this is a Bernina machine. The Brother has a top loading bobbin and the Bernina has a front loading bobbin. These two machines, as you have noticed, have names. I allow my sewing students to name my machines and they do so by way of vote. This is Pam and this is Frank. I will tell you that Pam here was just a few votes away from being named Chicken Nugget. So we're really happy she's named Pam. So let's talk about spools and bobbins for a second. Both thread and bobbins come in a variety of sizes, as you see. Whatever spool size you can have fit on your machine, you're fine to use. However, bobbins, you need to use whatever bobbin came with your machine. If you are unsure, if it was like a hand-me-down gift, you'll need to look up online what bobbin is best for your machine. Generally, Brother machines and top-loading machines like Brothers use plastic bobbins like this. And generally, front-loading machines use metal bobbins. Now, in terms of thread preference, I would just advise you not to save money on thread. There are many important ways to save money in life. Thread is not one of them, considering how much work you put into projects you sew. Thread is the only thing standing between you and a wardrobe malfunction. This is a very high quality thread. What I generally do is wait till it's on sale and then buy a ton of it. Thread does not have a shelf life, so you can stock up on it and you can see my personal sewing supply of thread is very extensive. I stock up on it whenever it's on sale and then just use it as needed. This brand that I usually buy is called Guterman Thread. One of the reasons I like this thread is it's reliable, but also when you are finished with it, it tucks nicely away down here like that. Thread very quickly becomes a giant mess if it's not locked away. So now that we understand thread, let's talk a little bit about the difference of needles and pins. New students frequently use the terms pins and needles interchangeably. Pins and needles are very different. Pins have heads on them and are used to temporarily hold fabric in place. Needles have holes in them and are used to pull thread through fabric. There are different kinds of needles. There are hand stitching needles and there are sewing machine needles. Now this is an organizer that I made for sewing machine needles. Because there are so many different types of fabric and different weights of fabric, there are different needles for each type of fabric. Now why can't you just use one all-purpose needle for all fabric? I'll tell you. Look at the difference between this organza and this denim. If we were to use the same needle on the organza as the denim, it would certainly damage the organza or break for the denim. So for the organza, I would use a needle size 10. It's a very fine needle. And for the denim, I would use a denim needle. Look at the difference between these needles. This needle, a denim needle, would put holes and damage our organza, and this needle would break, a size 10 would break on our denim. Now, the brand I typically use is the Schmetz brand needles because they're a good quality needle, and also I love their color coding system. When you pull out a needle without color coding, you do not know what size it is, and it's difficult to know what to do with it. With the Schmetz brand, they're all color coded, so I can see the little green mark here, and I know it goes back up here. This is a size 10 needle. I've got each one of my fonts color coordinated with the size of the needle. 
And this is a denim needle and the blue font coordinates there. This little white part here is just hook and loop tape, which is also just called Velcro. Now you can download this for free on my website, mod3style.com. Okay, now that we understand the difference between pins and needles and understand spools and bobbins, we're ready to learn how a sewing machine works. The way a sewing machine works, it holds thread above and beneath the fabric. The needle takes the thread from the spool and hooks it together with the thread from the bobbin in what's called a lock stitch. Now there are between two and four different ways to make your needle go up and down, depending on your machine. The first one we'll talk about is your foot control. I frequently refer to it as a gas pedal. This helps my students understand how it works. Just like a car, the harder you push it, the faster it will go. The slower you push it, the slower it will go. Now Pam here has something called speed control. If you push the speed controller down, no matter how hard you hit the gas, it will go this slow. It essentially takes power from your pedal and controls it. Now if you put it in the middle spot, you can get a little bit of speed, but not nearly as much as the top speed. Now this is great for new students who are learning to control so many different things that that's one less thing to think about. However, speed control also affects how strong your machine is. So if you're trying to go over some difficult places like a, a denim seam, you're going to need to have it on the top speed so that your machine has enough power to pull that denim through. One of the most important things you need to know about your foot control is to never rest your foot on your pedal. Otherwise, when you're going to change your needle and say you see a spider and you, your leg flinches, then you have sewn your finger. You need to be really careful to always rest your foot on the side of your pedal unless you're actually using it. Okay, way number two that your needle goes up and down is this little needle up down button, okay? Frank does not have this. Way number three is the stop and start button, okay? Frank also does not have this. Now the stop start button is intended for people who either do not want to or do not have the ability to use a foot controller. In order to use the stop start button, you have to disconnect your foot controller from behind, like this. And then you can just start your machine. And once again, your speed control will come in handy here. And you stop it the same way you started it. Now the third way that you can control your needle going up and down is on all machines. It is a hand wheel, okay? Now the hand wheel is not electric, it's actually mechanical. So if you were to lose power, you could sew an entire um, project with just your hand wheel. Okay, the hand wheel is also really useful when you want to very carefully place your needle exactly where it needs to go. This is useful, especially like if you're sewing a zipper and you don't want to risk breaking your needle, then you would really carefully use your hand wheel to place your needle down exactly where you want it. I will tell you one quick anecdote. When my daughter was only five years old, she saw so many students coming to my house and she was so desperate. She was relentlessly begging to sew on my sewing machines. So I finally made a compromise with her. I allowed her to just sit at my machine and turn the hand wheel. She would sit there for surprisingly long periods of time for a five-year-old and just sew with her hand wheel over and over. Now that we know the four different ways to make our needle go up and down, we are actually ready to learn how to sew. Now there are three different skills you need when we sew. 
you need to be able to sew a straight line, you need to be able to sew a corner, and then you need to be able to sew a curve. And we're gonna do that right now. Before we actually sew, we need to learn two vocabulary words. The first is feed dog. Now, sometimes it sounds like I said feed ducks, which is almost as weird a name as feed dogs. Makes about as much sense, but the word is feed dogs. They are these little teeth here. They actually reach up and grab your fabric and pull it back through the machine. You do not have to push your fabric. I'm gonna start so you can see them in action. Okay. And if you hit reverse, they go the other way. The way feed dogs work is they use our vocabulary word number two, which is our presser foot. Our presser foot pushes our fabric against our feed dogs, and then the feed dogs can pull the fabric through the machine. If our presser foot is up, this machine will not go. If I try and hit my gas while my presser foot is up, Pam will beep at me and tell me, error number one, you forgot to put down your presser foot. Now, some machines will go with the presser foot up, but that just leaves the feed dogs to almost just kind of scratch the fabric. They do not have the power to pull your fabric through unless your presser foot is down. Now, presser feet are interchangeable. And your machine probably came with a variety of different presser feet, as you see here. Bernina's presser feet are larger. Now, just incidentally, I feel like the sewing industry made a huge mistake by calling them presser feet. Maybe not as bad as feed dogs, but they obviously should have been named shoes. Women are irresistibly drawn to collecting shoes, and the same is not true for feet. And of course, Bernina's presser feet could have been called boots. Big mistake, sewing industry. The way you change a presser foot is you simply put it in and set down your presser foot like that and it latches right in. All right, we are ready to sew. Now that we have those two vocabulary words in mind, we can push over Frank for a little bit. I'm going to attach the flat bed for Pam. These little legs pull out and it gives us a bigger surface area for sewing. Now there are, as I said, three different skills that we need as we sew. We need to be able to sew a straight line, we need to know how to go around a corner, and we need to be able to sew a curve. For years, I have had very intelligent, put together women tell me that they personally just do not possess the skills needed to sew a straight line. This is simply not true. If these women have the ability to drive a car in between a set of lines, then they have exactly the skill set they need to sew a straight line. The problem is, people are naturally inclined to lose focus and to focus on the wrong things at times. Going back to our driving analogy, if a person drives off the road, it isn't because they lack the skill set required, it's more likely because they are focused on the wrong thing or they're distracted. The exact same thing is true with sewing, okay? When we sew, we have to decide exactly where we need to put our eyes. When I want to sew a straight line, I decide exactly where I'm going to look. I am going to look right here, right in the crack of this foot. I'm going to watch this line enter right here. I'm not going to watch back here, just right at the front of my presser foot. Now, most people are so excited about the functioning of the needle, they spend their time watching it go up and down and up and down, and that's when they find themselves out here. But if you keep your eyes right here and nowhere else, you will sew a straight line.
K in no time at all. It's a perfectly straight line done by just controlling what we look at. Now, to sew our corner is just a little bit tricky and that's why we needed our vocabulary words. Once again, we're going to only allow our eyes to focus right here. So, to go in a corner, we're just going to aim to stop roughly right in the corner. You can stop a second early if you want and use your hand wheel to take that last stitch to make sure it's exactly right. We're gonna stop with our needle in our fabric. This is when we will lift up our presser foot. It will hold our paper or fabric exactly where it needs to be and then we can turn to put our line in front of our presser foot once again. And stop. Now, say you make a mistake and go too far, okay? Go ahead and use your back stitch, take a couple stitches back, and stop with your needle right in that corner. Lift up your presser foot and turn your line toward you. And then go again. All right, I think you have the idea. So, of these three, the curve is actually the most difficult. This time it doesn't actually work for us to focus right at the front of our presser foot, because you see already our presser foot is off our line. So this is a time we need to actually focus right at the base of the needle. We are not going to watch our needle go up and down. We're going to focus right at the bottom of the needle. Now, if you come to a place that feels a little too difficult to turn, you can always lift up your presser foot and make a slight turn, and then carry on. On a really sharp curve, you may need to lift up your presser foot and turn frequently. All right. Do you see how by focusing exactly on where we want to go and not allowing ourselves to be distracted, we did exactly what we aimed to do? I think there is a life lesson here. It's easy to look at the wrong thing and be distracted by the wrong thing when you're sewing. But if you can do this, you do have the skill set you need to sew most sewing projects. And yes, you can sew a perfectly straight line. Now, if you would like to practice on these sheets before you start on actual fabric, you can print this off for free on my website, mod3style.com. Now, somebody will mention it is not good for your needle to sew on paper. Just get one needle, practice as much as you need, and then throw it out. We normally do not sew on paper. It's not great for your needles, it dulls them. Congratulations, you can now not only sew a straight line, but also a much more difficult curved line and a corners. You have the skill set to sew most simple projects now. Thank you so much for watching. Please join us for episode number two, where we will sew with actual thread on actual fabric, and we'll do some troubleshooting. Thank you to Hive Channel 5 for streaming us. Thanks again for watching. Check us out at mod3style.com.